Hey everyone, uh, welcome to 20 Sides to Every Story. I'm joined here by Kim, Isaac, Chris, Joe, and Jenna. And tonight we are playing The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. And uh, thank you, Birthday Boy, for the subscription. We appreciate that. Um, if it's any consolation, there is a song that is going to be persistently stuck in my head throughout the entire session. Happy birthday, Dawson. Um... Yeah, so we are playing here tonight, uh, The Wild Beyond the Witch Light. Uh, before we begin the game, just want to uh, welcome you to 20 Sides. Uh, if you're new to us, um, we are a gaming community. We stream many of our games here on Twitch, upload them afterwards to YouTube. And uh, we are a open gaming community. So if you happen to be looking for a game, uh, need uh, to find some folks to play with and you've been enjoying uh, watching us, please do hop into our Discord server. I'm going to throw the link there into the chat in Twitch. Uh, if you're watching this uh, after the fact on YouTube, uh, the link will be in the video uh, description. So join us there. We've got a Looking for Group channel. Uh, we recruit many of our players uh, directly from the server. So if you're looking to get in a game, that's a great place to go. Um, we also run a community campaign that is open uh we're running the final session of temple of elemental evil on saturday but there will be a second chapter act i'm not sure uh how to characterize it but there will be a, sort of a new campaign that will be built on the foundation of what we've laid out this past year running temple um so you can come check that out that'll be starting in july we'll start doing that so good time to jump into the discord and learn all about that because you'll be running with some fellow new characters in that if you decide to join up there if you really like what we're doing you can also support us on patreon i'll check that out so uh without further ado let's talk a little bit about this game here tonight um our characters have just arrived in yan which is sort of like the third i guess uh area Act. of prismir uh that you uh had have yet to explore um and our characters uh primarily came here initially to uh try to create some kind of a diversion they got some advice from a unicorn back in uh the forest of tether right <laughs> i always get the first two it was in tether but um she had advised the group uh, to potentially use the relationship between Granny Nightshade and her sister Endolin Moongrave um, to uh, uh, perhaps get a show going at Mother Horn, which is the home of Endolin, uh, or 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 do some do something do something that would convince Endolin um, to maybe invite Granny Nightshade for a visit, as they often do. Um, in order to give the party a, a opportunity to uh, get vicious things and um, maybe help out Will of the Feywild. Um, so you, you all came here to the Yan. It's this uh, kind of mountainous realm, um, very gloomy and overcast uh, persistently, and always storm clouds billowing overhead, big flashes of lightning. Um, you, you've come here, um, and... Shion, Maple, and Lim all can feel the presence of their things are in this realm. So um, they have a pretty good sense that their stuff is here. Um, taking a look up, uh, the, the one thing that is very clear in the sky is atop the highest peak uh, is this castle, this fortification that is built right into the mountainside. Um, and that is Motherhorn. Uh, that is where Endolin lives. And you can see um, up there the little storm cloud uh, air balloon that belonged to some shady merchants that you dealt with uh, earlier in the campaign. So pretty good indication that Shion and Maple's things are here as well. Um, you had, in the previous session, you, you just did some exploring. You kind of met some different characters. We won't have to go into the blow by blow of all of that just now. Uh, but you've been kind of getting your grounding here in Yan. Um, 
and I think you've got a task that you all are about to head out on uh, to perhaps help out Prince Alagarthus, who is um, a friend of Squirt, the animated oil can. Um, so it sounds like that's probably what you're going to end up doing. But before we get into all of that, I'm going to have all of you introduce your characters. And just because I am curious as DM and also just like observing your characters, I'm curious about some things that are going on mentally with some of your characters. I'm not sure how they've processed certain things. So we're going to have an individualized question for each of you to answer as we go through this here. So um, I think we will start... I want to start off with uh, Arlo. So, Joe, if you just want to give us an introduction to Arlo, and then uh, I'll ask my question. Sure. So, I'm Joe. I'm playing Arlo, who is a Herringan monk, who uh, previously, uh, when this adventure started, you know, we were all at the Witchlight Carnival, and Arlo used to work there. Um, until he got lost. When he got lost, he the Witchlight Carnival went away. He came back to the Witchlight Carnival in search of his missing uh, trinket, which was this small, tiny little coffin that contained the um, remains of his adopted son. Um, now that we're in in the Feywilds here, we've been Prismir. We've found Pincushion, who is this little animated rabbit doll that apparently has at least some of its life forces tied to that little casket so we found it so i'm like kind of happy cool we found that I know that in the process we missed out on finding some of the other items that the others in the group had so kind of just trying to help everybody get their stuff back and maybe free will of the feywild so what's up question yeah, my question I have for you is, in the previous session, you learned Whoa, that jams, um, Glister, who is a performer, uh, who has a twin uh, that you met, uh, you learned that they were here in Yan, and uh, Glister being the individual that, it, as an accident, was responsible for the fire that killed uh, your son, um... You had been asked by Gleam, save Glister. Just a general question about how uh, how does Arlo feel about that? Um, and what is Arlo's feelings maybe about helping Glister? Oh, obviously Arlo is sad about that. That's in the past. Arlo has since become a monk. And so he's trying to, you know, put sort of his mental discipline over maybe emotions and also kind of believes in forgiveness and whatnot and maybe redemption so i do uh feel bad for a lot of the people around here that have been tricked by endolin and in other places the other sisters so i um, i feel as conflicted as i might as you might suspect about trying to save Glister and or there's the one that's captive, right? And Gleam, yeah, is the, oh, yeah, whichever Gl one. Yeah, Glister is the one that uh, is captured. Um, so, awesome, thank you. Let's move next. Uh, let's go to Lim, and uh, so Jenna, give us a, kind of the rundown on Lim, and then I'll ask my question. Okay. Uh, well, Lim is a hexblood wizard um and the thing that kind of brought her here was that she lost her uh which she lost her doll uh which she was hoping to kind of uh help her figure out like um like supposed to be kind of tied to her past to figure out like who put her the curse on her that has made her a, a hex blood um and kind of through meeting this group, uh, kind of got wrapped in with them to uh, go into the Feywild and find uh, find her stuff along with like everyone else. That was kind of kind of her main goal. Like she's been trying to figure out how to break this curse before uh, she ends up turning into a hag herself. So 
She doesn't know how long it takes or the details of it. She just knows it's happening and knows there's a tie to it. And so she's hoping that getting this doll back will give her enough clues to fix that. So question I have for you is you have learned that your mother, your adoptive mother is Endolin Moongrave. Mm -hmm. um, as a result, your curse is tied to a wish that your true mother made to end a mm -hmm. So you became, in order for you to be saved your life uh, being maybe forfeit as a result of a sickness um, when you were young, you learned that your mother made a wish that you would do anything anything uh to save your life and endolin said the 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 caveat to it was that she would no longer be your mother and she would take her place and mm -hmm. so how do you feel about the possibility of being discovered by endolin and uh just kind of general feelings about re remembering that you have this connection to the hag uh, I would say mostly fear. She's definitely afraid because, like, while she does remember that there's this connection, she does like she doesn't really remember anything else. She just knows that there is a connection, and she doesn't know like if it was like her own like if like if it was her own doing that kind of blocked it out. Like you know how sometimes like you just don't want to remember something, so you just kind of shove it back. Um, or if it has something to do with her and she I think she's just worried about like who has more information and who can use it more because even though she doesn't remember she know hag she knows hags are smart and she's seen that they're deadly uh, from being in here so I think she's very concerned uh about not only that it being a hag but a hag that knows her personally uh and like what she might do to kind of get to her goals thank you mm -hmm. next up um let's go to maple so, uh, Chris, you want to give us a little rundown on Maple, and then I'll ask the question. Sure. Uh, Maple is a fairy barbarian, and she grew up in an area where a lot of people, well, like some people knew magic really well, others were fighters, and back and forth, and that went back and forth. Her brother was very inclined with magic; she was not. But they picked, but they played and picked on each other all the time until at the fake carnival, he went off to pursue his magical interests and left her with his necklace. Um, which hopefully we're going to find soon. She's very attached to that moment in time, and the netlist brings her to that stuff like that. She's a very emotional barbarian. She'll she'll rage out of happiness as much as anger, um, and she's driven by her emotions in that way. I think she's kind of kind of like Jan and seems to be emotional. Like Prismir seems to be emotional, and she's starting to realize she is a fairy and she is from the Feywild, and that's starting to make sense. Awesome. My question for you is, um, you have now heard the name of your brother invoked while here in Prismir, Mir, and it seems that um, very likely that he is here somewhere. Um, what are your feelings about that, and uh, what are you thinking about in regards to the possibility of running into your brother? Well, Maple is very excited to see her brother again. Apparently he's doing well. He's got henchmen. Uh, he's getting he's he's learned magic and when she meets him again they'll be able to play out the next step in whatever they've done i think that her brother's grown up and a wizard now and she's and he's going to see her as a child because she hasn't really changed all that much and i'm looking forward to playing her out through that role awesome uh let's go next to him uh to, to tell us a little bit about shion and then i'll ask the question Perfect, thanks. My name is Tim. I'm playing Shion. She is a elven wizard. 
Um, she was orphaned as a very young child. Um, she doesn't remember much about her family. She was, however, adopted by an older gentleman who she just recently figured out has the name of Ringle Run. Um, she's very excited to learn more about him for sure. Um, she left her ring at the carnival. It was a gift from Ringle Run for graduating the academy at such a young age. Um, it was silver and adorned with gemstones. She has a feeling that it's fear. She's also having a feeling right now that we're for more than our objects at this point. It's more about the people that we're helping and seeing and running into and touching daily. It's not as much about retrieving our item. And question for you is... How is Shion processing the revelation from your, uh, just like Lim, you had a memory of the carnival, uh, apparently a, a repressed memory, um, and it was revealed that Ringle Run and Kellek, uh, Maple's brother, apparently were colleagues of some sort, and it seems it had arranged a meeting at the Witchlight Carnival to go on some kind of errand, something that you weren't to be a part of. Uh, how, how is Dion processing all of that? So, obviously, I wasn't ready and Ringle Run was aware of that. I learned a lot in Academy, but obviously I didn't learn enough to be able to help them on their errand. I did have a bigger charge that went taking care of Maple, and that was super important for them to make sure that she was well watched over. Um, I do feel bad, though, that we have left the grounds of the carnival because we were having such a good time together and never even thought about returning to the area before it disappeared. Thank you. And then the final one here is, uh, Isaac, you want to tell us a little bit about Vish? Sure. Uh, Vish is a Trident artificer. She uh, visited the carnival a number of years ago. Uh, she lost her... Uh, grandfather's tinker tools that were gifted to her uh, after her grandpa passed away and uh, with the loss of those tools her creativity was lost as well uh, she kind of uh, did odd jobs here and there but really never felt a calling or passion um, and started this adventure looking for those tools uh, because when she had them, she felt that she could do anything, that she felt very creative. And uh, she's kind of lost herself a bit. Um, as the uh, experiences of working with the group and uh, what we've been through has gone on, uh, though she still uh, holds much... Uh, there's a strong place in her heart. And she, there is a longing for longing for her to get those uh, items back. She's, I think, learning a lot uh, about uh, what's really important with the trials of trials ahead. Uh, she's kind of seemed like she's had a sense of purpose, and with that, I think that's kind of what she's been longing for. So at the the moment that's what she's uh, up to still a bit curious very socially awkward and uh she, i don't i don't know if she's ever going to get past that <laughs> so beyond Please. beyond the recovery of your tools what is the single most important thing uh to vish right now uh single most important thing to vish um well i mean short term just there's a lot of people that need help and she's in a position where she could try to rectify some mistakes a lot there's a big picture going on that she really had no idea was going on there's a lot of things going on that i think that she uh seems that she could have an effect and help out with uh but as far as long term what vish would like as far as a goal um really i think she's always had her unanswered question about her grandpa 
what happened to him because it was kind of mysterious about how he passed away. And uh, I think that might be something that maybe that she maybe not a goal and like this adventure, but just a wish is that she understood what happened really to him. All right. Awesome. So thank you all uh, for letting us get uh, maybe some deeper insights into your characters as we start this uh, session back up. Um, probably don't have to go through a full accounting of everything that happened in the previous session. You had a lot of leads, a lot of different things. Um, kind of every every area has been that way. You've, a lot of people have their own issues or problems, and uh, um, I think early on the crew kind of decided there's only so much maybe we can do uh, for everyone. So, But the thing that you did latch on to um, was that you heard from the Korids that there uh, is an individual, an elf, by the name of Prince Alagarthus, who is um, apparently being toyed with a bit um, after having made a deal with Endelin to go home. Um, is basically sitting in the middle of a lake in a boat and trying to get to eight different beacons that are surround this lake. Um, should be no problem to uh, light the beacons and open up the portal that would go home, but he's being harried by uh, some winged creatures that seem to be um, besting him. And so um, you have taken up that charge and you're going to head up um, you're, you're with some guests as well. Um, you are with a with Gleam, uh, who is uh, this elf uh, performer that uh, has a, a connection with Arlo, and uh, you also are with um, the uh, Dandelion Knight and his paramour, the Honeybee, um, and so Amador the. Uh, the dandelion knight is uh, with you as well. And so, no picture. So, um, as you're heading up the rocky path, uh, it is cold. It is miserable up here in the mountain. Um, and there's just, no matter, maybe you pull out, even if you pull out some old r blanket from your, your pack or whatnot, it just seems like impossible to get warm. There's just sort of this per pervasive kind of cold kind of clammy feel to your skin. The, the sky is just constantly being lit up by um, lightning, which occasionally, you notice, seems to strike at these big copper rods that are like 60 feet tall that sit at various peaks um, that are within eye shot. And uh, given, you know, you're going to be climbing up this mountain for some time, you will notice that at times it seems that those rods discharge their electricity it seems to funnel it back up to the castle. Um, I believe the Corrid Queen told you something about what that is. That is uh, energy that is going to power something called the Orrery of... Um, uh, I'm blanking on the name of it, but it's a big device that Endelin uses to kind of foresee the future. Um... And so, oh, uh, Ori of Tragedy. Yes, yes, Ori of Tragedy. Um, and so that is what's going on. As you're climbing up the rocky track, I think at some point, Arlo, you're going to feel kind of rooting around in your bag is once again, um, Pincushion uh, sticks his head up and says, uh, Hey, Ar Arlo, is this, uh, is this a good time to talk? Um, sure. Uh, I just, I overheard some things the other day when you were talking with that, that elf lady. Oh. Oh. Your son, your son died? Yes, that's... Does that have something to do with this thing that's around my neck? Yeah. Oh. It's really sad. I'm sorry. It's okay, Pincushion. Was it a long Not time ago? At least, yeah, it was a long time ago. Long time. 
Well, I, I just wanted you to know I'll take really good care of it, okay? I believe you will. Okay. Just keep that that funnel thing away from me. Oh, the oil can? Yeah, I don't like him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really like him either. What? <laughs> he, he just, like, kind of gives a little smile <laughs> and he, like, goes back into the pack. Um, oh, and you're walking. I don't know, Vish. You got Squirt with you? He's like on the top of your uh -huh. head. There's a little hat. Sure. Yeah. He's just Held hum on. He's just humming. He's like, hoo hee hoo hoo. Let's go. Let's go. Beautiful. Keep it going. Um, you climb in and climb in and climb in. You, you, it takes probably a couple hours uh, trek up the mountain. Um, but eventually, uh, you come to. I'm going to switch to my other screen here for the folks <laughs> watching. Remove your token here. You move up the mountain path. So eventually you come to this kind of crater um, in which there is a, a lake. And surrounding uh, this uh, crater lake are these eight columns of rock. Um, and I'm going to say maybe two of them right now are lit at the tops. Um, they're, they're too tall. They're probably like two... Yeah, maybe like 200 feet tall. And each one has like a, like a spiraling column or a spiraling uh, staircase or a, a switchback staircase that winds up to each of them. Like a, a very long climb up to the top. Um, so you can't even like see like whatever it is that it's actually burning. You're just seeing kind of the light of the flame and then the smoke emanating off. And um, you see like in the middle of the lake, there's a rowboat. And in the rowboat is this... Um, very exhausted looking individual like like they're it seems like it's taking like all of their energy to like keep going at the oars to like make a little bit of traction going um as they seem to be kind of angling themselves to go to like like the very next column and um he's holding uh he's got like a torch in the boat that's sort of propped up there um and you see that there's eight winged beasts that are flying about. They've got antlers on the tops of their heads, sort of a some kind of a bastardization of a, a large, um, maybe eagle and and a buck or something like that. And they seem to be flying and howling, like they're making bird-like sounds. But you get you get this impression that they're laughing and cackling at the poor soul in the boat. Um, and as he's, like, just just getting to the next beacon and kind of ties his boat off, you see one of these birds kind of fly down, uh, or fly up to the beacon, and you just see it kind of, like, start to kick, like, rock material at, at the flame, and it goes out, and you just see the sigh on the man's face. But nonetheless, he grabs that torch... And you see him just trudge slowly and sort of <laughs> um, hollowly uh, up the stairs. Have the beast taken notice of us yet? What was that? Had the beast taken notice of us yet? No, you uh, you're some distance away yet, so like no no one's aware of you as you're just coming upon the scene. Well, to, we want these eagle folks to help on a performance, right? So maybe if we can just convince them to do that, acted long enough for this guy to light all his things. With Maple's assistant, maybe? Yeah. You could help him <laughs> fly to the top rather than try to climb to the top. You mean now? Well, once we get the bird folks distracted. Okay. Uh, that might distract them. Let me know. I'll be ready. And if we need speed on our side, I can now cast haste. Which I'm very <laughs> excited for. 
<laughs> so just to like help you get a sense of space here, like this lake is large. Um, and each of the beacons is probably some like 400 feet apart. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I think we try to talk to these beasts first. Are there any kind of... Could we move to like one of the braziers and wait for them to kind of fly over? Maybe, yeah, maybe we go to the the next one he lights. And then, because we know they'll come there to try to snuff it out. Hey, you bird people! We want to talk to you! That Over here! Too. That works too. Oh. Come on! Yeah, that'll do it. Are you a deer? Or a buck? Or what? I don't know. Come on down! Start to make a bit of a scene, and one of them uh, flies down and um, comes to just like maybe like 30 feet over uh, overhead. And is uh, looking at you, and it says, "Whoa! Don't uh, you've got our attention?" Oh. That was the goal. You used to be like a great performer guy, right? Used to be. Well, we still, oh. we can still perform. Uh, we oh, just okay. we're in a little bit of a slump. Okay, I don't want to talk to you about that. And then, uh, Jarlo, and... Ugh. So you got the attention of this of this one. The others, you know, uh, you, you, you watch as the conversation is happening, you know. Uh, Prince Elagarthus gets to the top of the next column, lights it, and you can see on the opposite side some of the peritons are... <laughs> dive down and snuff out the, the flame. Keep keep going there, boys. Ha <laughs> ha. We'll, What's going on? With we'll get this? our freedom yet. Oh, I see. What's going on with your uh your freedom thing here? Oh. No. Uh, a little bit of a poor performance. You got some bad reviews. And the last show. See, well, what if? And what do you need to do? So you got bad reviews. So now you're. Well, we got one. Fighters. We got one bad review. The, the only one that really oh. matters, you know. Andalyn, she kind of felt we were going, getting a little soft, and we were maybe eh, kind of reusing some of the same material and tropes. It's getting a little oh, boring. Okay. Uh, I, you know, actors and performers do have a tendency to fall into that, you know. Will Ferrell's the, era. um. <laughs> but uh, you, you know, we have some fresh ideas. So could we, could we maybe help you? Maybe we could help you put on a good performance that Endelin would be so. Excited about that she'd even write to her sisters in the other realms of Prismir here and ask them to come watch. You would be the talk of all of Prismir. Are you saying you're a playwright? You got you got some some material. You know they say that experience. This is Arlo. Is best, experience is the best material. We have some cool ass experiences. Okay. Well, certainly don't speak like a playwright, but um, you, oh, you've got I some good. Like a... You got some. You or improv, imp, kind of an improv group. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Arlo's bursting with inexperience. Oh. Well. Um. Yeah, hey, Morsha, Morsha, fly on down here. Like another periton, like comes down. They, these people say that they've got some inspiration. Pails that they've been through that they might be able to give to us. You know, we was to be great performers in the city of Greyhawk. This is... Used to be. Used to be. And then the other periton. Used to be. <laughs> well, no, I guess we're still also curious, though. What are you... Why are you flying around? 
No, fire's here. Well, because Endelin said if we just prevent this fellow from... I don't know what exactly. We're just supposed to we're supposed to put out the beacons that he is lighting, and she will return us back to our beautiful forms once again, so we can begin performing again back on the road. So these aren't your natural performance forms. Oh heavens, no! I mean, we thought about doing the whole bird antler thing. Um, it could be kind of a good gimmick. Yeah, actually, it be more of a, a freak show, with... though. Well, it kind of fits a little bit with one of the stories I was going to have, but, you know. You've got a story? Um, if, okay. Well, I guess my curiosity here is, how long do you have to keep doing this for your return? Because this man Forever. is lighting these fires for his freedom. You're snuffing them out for your freedom. This seems like a never-ending cycle. I think she's got you guys made out, man. Well, um... Do you mind, what are, what are, like, do you remember her, like, exact wording on, like, what you need to do? Well, she, I mean, we already, she, she said, we, she kept us, after a really bad performance, she, she kept us prisoner for a matter of time. We begged, and we cried, and we screamed, and we howled. Please give us our freedom, Endelin. We will we will do anything. Give us our freedom, please. And she said, Oh, anything. You know, in that kind of way. Yeah. And then we knew we were our fate was sealed. And she said, Oh, anything. And then she said, yeah, Well, that, you can have your tracked. freedom, but uh you will not be as you are. You will You'll be free to take to the skies. And we said, oh, flying. That sounds pretty cool. What could go wrong? Bird things. That's what we've become. Okay. So, you know, the whole messing with him is to kind of try to get a leg back up, you know, where he kind of kicked us down a bit. The bird thing, we want to we want to reverse back. We want our old forms back. Isn't that right, gang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess what I'm struggling to understand, did she tell you that if you do this, she'll turn you back? Or are you just doing this in hopes of being noticed? That's what she said. She did. Okay. And, but that's or, what I'm curious. Like, the exact wording for, like, what you need to do We just have to get him here. to give up. Oh. Oh. And we're oh. pretty close, I think. He's looking pretty tired. He's got okay. those tiny little elf arms. He can't be... But she didn't up this... look like. And she didn't say when he had to give up. Well, right? I guess not. How long so does he if... have to give up? So what if you let him finish? We we could double check what he needs to do. You let him finish, he gives up because he completed his task, and then you can snuff him out. Yeah, but I think if he if he lights all the things and we failed. I'm gonna have to agree. Mm, maybe let's talk to the other guy, cause I wanna. There's gotta be a way yeah, to. Yeah, I got. I, he, he's get. He got a second one burning. Oh. <laughs> wow, that's a first. <laughs> Do you see him? He's like coming. He's like halfway down. He's just like, oh man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> he's like halfway, so like he doesn't know if he should just go back up and like redo that one or go back down. Uh. But he's just, you see him kind of like, he just like lumps down on the stairs and just like buries his head in his hands. So they, have to, so they have to keep going until he gives up. Which is any second now. Yes. Now, maybe we should Can go he... see exactly what he needs to do. Cause okay. He could give up for now. You know, mm -hmm. and then they could go back and be like, well, we made him give up. Let's talk to this guy. Hey, guy. So Let's you're see. all, like, uh, going to try to go and climb up the pillar? Mm. Like the halfway. Halfway, yep, that's where he's there. at. So you climb up, you know, uh, make your way over there, climb up the 200 feet or so where he's sitting. And right away, Squirt is like, oh, Good evening, Your Majesty. <laughs> and Algarthus uh, 
looks up and he says, Uh, Squirt, is that you? Where have you been, you old tin can? And Squirt kind of starts to kind of just mash together stories. Well, I've been hanging out with these guys and uh, messing with hags and doing something with saving kids and all sorts of stuff. We messed, we found a, a beehive. That was fun. <laughs> I talked to a Cyclops beekeeper. I've never done that before. I never I don't get too many chances to practice my giant. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Hello, I. Uh, you must be Squirt. Thank you for taking such good care of Squirt. This Squirt, you've been taking care of us. Really? Uh, either way, um, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what, uh, what are you doing? Your Majesty, sorry. I'm trying to get back home. That's what I'm trying to do, trying and failing. That you might not have noticed, but these um these bird guys are stopping you. Uh, right. That's right. I had. I, I don't know what to do. They're relentless. I, th I thought they would have given up by now. Certainly, this is an asterisk on the deal that I made with Endelin. Deal. That's actually what we're a little curious about. What are the exact terms of your deal. Well, I came here, um... Came here to... get some assistance with a... a dragon that threatens my people and my home. And... I heard about Endolin and her ability to see into the future and maybe be able to provide some... insight onto this matter. And so I... I, I, I came here for... Uh, that sort of, uh, consult. So, she said that she'd be able to help me, uh, but only if I were to remain with her here for at least a year. So, I accepted the terms of this deal, uh, although the year seemed to drag on and on and on. Um, I don't know if it has something to do with time acts differently here in the Feywild than where I'm from. But finally it ended. Mm -hmm. I found myself asking Endelin how I might be able to get back home, and she told me that I could only do so in the light of these eight beacons. Seemed like an easy enough thing, um, but I've been unable. These these Peritons are too stubborn. Uh, do you know why they're, they're stubborn? you know why they're doing it? I imagine they are doing it. They outlived their usefulness to her as performers. I mean, I told you, I spent a whole year here, so when they were their elven forms, they saw them uh, many times perform on Endolin's stage. And How many stars? How many stars? Would you Out of five. On? They would give it a solid three and a half most of the time. They're adequate. Oh, hold on nothing to write home to mom about. Except there were elves? Uh, yes. Jean? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there's a lot of us, but I don't see it, so that's interesting to me. Uh, if it's any, yeah. uh, He's an elf too. Um, so he, uh, he just says that he thought he thought the performance was fine, but Endolin had grown bored of them. So, yes, I suspect that since they outlived their usefulness bird. on the stage, he's still going to get some entertainment out of them one way or another. Here we are. Yep. Yep. Do you ever try working together? Try to get out of this mess? Working together? I think our goals are... So we're at a zero-sum game here. Well... I wish to light the beacons they will need to prevent me from doing so. But... So let me hear it again. You said that 
you will get home in the light of the beacons, correct? But she told me. Have Anything no else that I'm missing option. there? Does it specifically have to be you? They just have to be lit. Um, by all means, if you're able to light them, uh, you can see if the Peritons will allow you to. Okay. But you, you gotta give up, though. You yeah, gotta give up. Yeah, this guy has to give up to the Peritons, and then we spread out light, and then they will be lit, and he can go home. Boom, done. All right, cool. We're good. <laughs> well, you solved this. <laughs> you must give up, though. <laughs> yeah, you gotta give up. <laughs> how how do I do that exactly? I just give you the torch, and that constitutes giving up. I don't oh, know. you have I to think... look like you have to look very defeated. Maybe hunch your shoulders a bit. Oh, yeah, hey, don't look. Can't don't look imagine excited. that will take much effort. <laughs> Let's get the birds on board. Things, Let's just mutter talk to them about it too. About you have to feel it in your heart that you're giving up. You know. Yeah, that that feeling that you were feeling ten minutes ago, like tap back into that. Be your I own actor. Yeah, done. <laughs> do you need some help? No, there's no way you're ever going home again. You're never going to save your people, or from. The dragons, they're probably already long gone. You're very good at Maple this. standing behind him <laughs> and she's screaming to get the press too. The wings are all down. Alright, let's let's see if we, let's see if we can do this. Um My only other question is once we do this, does he like does like does she know? And like she and like pointing to um Mother Horn where like uh Moongrave would be. I suspect there's very little that she doesn't know. Yeah, it did, there's no sneaking up on her. I mean, either uh, way, I mean, if it don't work, then it just doesn't work. But I mean, at least we could try that. All right, worth a try. Hurt. Still, it looks like you figured all this out, Lim. You'll figure it out. I mean, let's not say that we figured out until it's actually figured out. Okay. Right now, it's just a try. It's a trial run. Um, so figure out of her. Watching us now. Ma Maple, do you mind calling them over? You're really good at that. Hey guys, we got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get the one, like the the one that seems like the representative comes back and ah. flies back over. And I'll, I'll fly up to him so that there's like a parlay there. Hey, I was at uh, you getting some of that improv you're talking about, like down on paper, or you're doing a little rehearsal over here, a little workshop. Yeah. Yeah, but that wasn't the only thing, though. Lim was talking to Alagarthus. Yeah. And he he doesn't have to be the one to light the beacons. So she's got the whole thing figured out. And if you want to talk to her for a second, she can walk you through it. And then he'll get he, what he wants, and you'll get what you want. And then hopefully we can put on a great show. That's the plan. This is a terrible story. <laughs> no, this isn't the story. This is what's oh. actually happening. And it has to happen, and then we're going to turn it into a story. She's going to light the beacons? Well, we're oh, gonna, yeah, you know, we're gonna. He's you, gonna give up, so you down, win. He, he flies down to limb, because we're gonna light the beacons. Yeah. No. Why? I'm not gonna, not gonna allow you to. You, you just gotta make him give up. I need so to make sure that the beacons get get... don't get lit. No, no, no! You said that he just has to give up. So just make him give up, and I'll be right back. And she starts to walk away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh -oh. the, the Periton, like grabs you like by with a challenge. <laughs> You're and, like, supposed to lifts you up, up. Like lifts you up and is just like flying you around. Do you, are, you, are you are you like fighting back or resisting it? Uh, I mean, if I'm, like, in the air, because we climbed halfway up this tower, yeah. I imagine I'm pretty high up. I don't think I'm going to be struggling too much. Okay. So it's just kind of like, you, like, flying you around. <laughs> what? You're not lighting the beacons. I will fly you around all day and night if I have to. That wasn't part of your deal. <laughs> no. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. <laughs> I'm very delicate. Don't drop me. <laughs> oh, I don't want to hurt you. I just want to stop you from lighting the beacon. I'm a delicate flower. <laughs> I mean, there's not. I mean, 
I can I can do stuff like whew, I'm gonna she's gonna hold out her hand and do like a little prestidigitation like little whoosh of fire. It's she can't she doesn't actually have any fire spells so she's just she's just being like oh I can do stuff look at this. <laughs> yeah. a little pyrotechnic there that's all right. Yeah, I can I can do stuff, and like I can um I could make people move fast i can apparently remove curses now um i could change my appearance uh i can only do that once per uh, i could do it some more i guess but uh. <laughs> yeah, the, real, real point. Point. she'll be like she'll be like keep your hand on the birdie that she like claps in front of her face and when she like moves her hands away she looks like uh uh she'll look like um what am i thinking she'll look like shion and so like her her appearance changes to just a very short shion <laughs> The bird uh, can't see you exactly because it's got your ex talons and it's like <laughs> zooming around. But like one of its one of the other ones is like, like the one that it called out to uh, Morsia. Mm -hmm. Just is like, hey, uh, Achilles, you. See, she's right. He, he looks like that other one. Oh, and then he like he like zips you back over to where your everyone else is and like sets you down so he can observe it himself. And he's like, that's pretty interesting um you could almost you could do like a comedy of errors thing with that you know oh that'd be cool i'm i'm still in need of training so what's a comedy of errors <laughs> you know like the, like you got like a twin setup or like there's two people that look very similar and one is out in the market uh futzing around and clowning around while the other is a very like uh, astute a uh, person in a position of authority, and then they get all scrambled up because the public with them is foolishness oh, and ascribes I, it I to think... the more important <laughs> twin. I think that would be very believable. <laughs> There's a lot to the showbiz thing I didn't know about. I feel like I just got called out. <laughs> huh. Yeah, like, yeah, we could do that. Um, but yeah, like, so she's gonna like pat the prince on the back. She'd be like, "All right, uh, keep making him uh, sad and give up, and I'm gonna go for a hike." And she's gonna try to like walk the thing again. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. So like, I just gonna, you're like. Go for <laughs> you're walking up you're walking up to try to light yeah. the, the the beacon okay yeah um it's a great idea it's a great idea just trust us on this the uh, look at this what's one of the, the parents and <laughs> like a different like a, a another random parrot like like they let you like get all the way up there and you light it and so like what's at the top is like a stone uh it's a it's a brazier Okay. Uh, a big uh, brass brazier. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. So it's not like some like stone indent. Like it's actually mm -hmm. like a. Yeah, this is like very intent, uh, intentionally put here. Uh, there are coals inside uh, the the bowl, um, and it seems that you know you you grab the t the torch as you go up there and you touch it to the coals. It like lights immediately, like soaked in some oil or alcohol or something um but uh just as as quickly as you do that um you see like one of the peritons like goes and dives into the water and then like zooms its way up and just starts like batting its wings at the fire and all the water and everything like puts it out and it like flies back and me me you know, mingles with the others that are just like soaring up and over your head. You're not supposed to make me give up. You're supposed to make him give up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mister. You have an idea. You have an idea too. <laughs> cool. Go uh... My idea is that everybody who can fly can go and light a beacon because he can't stop us all at once. Maybe. So if I can fly and maybe the maple can fly, and can you fly a limb? Uh I cannot fly. Maybe maple can carry you? 
How many of them um, are there? I think we only know have two instead of three. Uh, there are eight of them. I don't yeah. know. I can move fast, but I can't or, or fly. Six. I, I think that would or be a good idea, but then they were going to be ruining there. I really hoped maybe so that we could figure take? out both. Why are we okay. siding with him? Wait, we need them. Let's side with them. Wait. Well, how about we Did just ask side? them, what's it going to take for you to let him light all these things? Or, like, let us light them for him. What's it going to take? Is it going to work for them? They hmm. say, um, they say, the lead one that comes back and talks to you and says, uh, I, a commitment from Endlin that she will transform us back. Right, well. Yeah. We can try to get that, right? Can we try to get that? Yes. Well, we have an invite to the thing, right? Or let is you, that uh, like do for a... an audience with Endelin herself, or is that just an invite to the castle? It was a invite for an audience. Um... So maybe what we could do is we could just go there. Right? Tell Endelin we have a show. Give to the what are what are these things called? What were you called before you became Flying Bird Deer? Uh, so even before you ask that, like. That that lead one, and maybe the second one too, like the male and the female that you're originally talking to, uh, Archelius and Morsha, they fly over to you, and they say show you. So you do have a show, and then they say, oh, we were, we're the Greyhawk Mummers. Greyhawk Mummers. So if we go, we meet with Endelin, and we convince her that we have a good enough show for the Greyhawk Mummers that's worth her turning you back for. And then letting what's his majabi go. Who would then stop? You know, we could we could try that. Can we try that? This way we don't have to accidentally use brain death magic on people. What 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 is what, what is, oh, your, that makes for such what a is your show? Oh like a third one ever... comes over. Yeah. So have you ever noticed the little puppeteer uh what's that? Uh, Marionetter cart down there. You ever seen the show uh, that one's dreadful. putting on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just this awful. This is the actual full real life version of that show. Not a marionette version. The actual version with real eyewitness accounts of the murder of that poor little rabbit boy. Primary sources. Oh my gosh. You you have the full the full thing? There's more than one act? Oh. It was a very quick show, if I remember correctly. There'd be yeah. more than one act. It's currently happening right now. In fact, you might, some of you might be able to play yourselves. <laughs> that an intimidation? No. No? I think so. <laughs> oh. It was literally just like a... No. <laughs> no, no, no. It's more like... <laughs> No, it's like they're, they're them. I'm not telling them like yeah. they're gonna. Yeah, they're we're gonna not. We're not gonna magic missile, magic missile them. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, oh, play yourself. yourselves. Yeah, you so, play yourself. Arlo, you get the sense as you're starting to talk about this, like they are getting enthralled. At least like a couple. Um, I'm just gonna say, like you maybe get the sense that if you were maybe more performative about how you were telling this. You might be able to attract more of them. More so it's a big gestures and talking about the grandiose plan and all right. I'll try well, to conjure. Put, put it this way: you're you're Solution. you're descri you're describing like what your the story, and these are like these are actors, and so if you had others like helping you out and playing roles <laughs> and stuff. So, tell the story. The way that we lived the story. The real way that the story went. Lim, over there, prepare your death brain magic. Hey, I guess I'll play the little rabbit that gets his head blown off because I'm the only one here with rabbit ears. I love that plan. Mm -hmm. I'm Ow. ready. I'll play you. I'll play you. I didn't, do, I didn't write this in iambic pentameter or anything, but here... Right now, we're just kind of improving. We could definitely get this down a little better. Vish... 
I'm gonna Why play you. Do what you were doing at the time, right before no. she shot the person in the head. Okay, I'll play both of us. Okay, you were okay. talking to me, weren't you? Okay. Uh huh. Uh, Julia Shion, uh, Maple, come on over there. Let's give them a, a real <laughs> lifestyle. Come on, okay. let's do this. A Amador comes up to you and he's like, "And which part shall I play in this bit of theater?" Ooh have the best Eat. part and i try to find a little scarf to pull out of my bag <laughs> <laughs> gonna be peter cottontail hell yeah that is a fetching scarf I, can i keep now, this what was the rhyme do we remember the rhyme yes you can keep this scarf. after people perform their stuff well sometimes they can take props home that's okay but you have to do a good job All right how are you at talking oh. like a little baby i can talk <laughs> like a baby i can talk like a Elder, I I have a very I have great range. Now, You'll see, my love. We I will I Peter. will make you so <sighs> proud. <clears throat> okay, everyone, places. Okay, <laughs> let's get this going. <laughs> yes. Aha! I am a villain, and I am rhyming. <laughs> yes, you are with impeccable Fly, rhyming. Up. Whoa. And Give I'll me your things. Some, some shining. Plus your Hell stuff, no. you do. <laughs> invaders of our realm. Or Hold else on. We shall. Hold on there. You smell. Hello. Hold on there. We don't want. Oh, he, she's going to be going like that. Hold on there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we don't want fight. I'm old and little grumpy. No, of course we don't want to fight. Oh. Lim's gonna pretend to be tired and not just kind of like sway. Give us oh. your happiness and give us your dreams. Give me your eye color and Did that be your screen. <laughs> and blood. We want lots of blood. Oh, wow. That's that too. <laughs> <laughs> and your scarves if you have them Lead. we're we're just here uh, come on everybody we're just here in this we're in a tavern remember that moves on feet oh, oh yeah. yeah when we yeah. killed the guy you were in a we're tavern so that excited. moved on feet that sounds really yeah. cool but no that when we when we i killed the guy it was before the tavern Oh, we, oh, that's no, right. not at the Oops. tavern yet. Oops. Yeah. Okay. The you can see like the, the Parentons are like are losing it a little bit as like no, Amador breaks character, and right. they're like, "Hold this. on, Amador, <laughs> you come in once we say we're at the tavern." But for now, it's just me and a bunch of little rabbits like me demanding oh. that you give me your dreams. This is proof of concept. This is not final. <laughs> this is not the final. <laughs> Hold on, dude. My brains out. The interesting part. Oh. Oh, Hold yeah, on, sure. dear partner. We don't want to do anything. She's not she do it, but That's you see, like, little scene. prestidigitation, like, pew, <laughs> pew. Oh, no. And then I turn around and I, like, throw some water above my head and it looks <laughs> red enough. And then I fall to the ground. And I pull, like, my shirt over my head so it looks like my head got blown off. Right. <laughs> so as you end the scene, everybody who participated, uh, do a performance oh, check. <laughs> This can only go well. Let's see. Oh boy. Performance. Maple. Awesome. Maple Here we go. I think uh, Ar Money. Arlo, you have advantage. Okay. Oh. We'll take advantage here on this. Mathematically, that stuff's then... supposed to happen. What do I? This is the game. Number, right. <laughs> Big number. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, in this game, unfortunately, it was so complex and uh, <laughs> it, it was just like the plot got confusing because of like Amador and and uh, there's just like a lot of like rehashing what exactly everybody had like their own perspective on what exactly happened, and so it just becomes like kind of a mess. And like, only, you only get like the couple of peritons. Uh, you do notice that. Alagarthus does attempt at some point to grab the torch and like go and light a couple, but un unfortunately, not enough were gathered <laughs> together to distract. <laughs> Respect the attempt. And like, like 
the lead periton is just like um well i've got some notes uh do you want them now or do you want them after you go and and secure our transformation back from Enderlin? I kind of want to hear him now. Gonna we're going to lie. secure you an opportunity to win your transformation back in a different way. How's that sound? I mean, I I'm on board. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, tell us the notes. Well, um, oh. the, the acting was dreadful. Uh, mm -hmm. The only one I believed was he's pointing at like Arlo, and then he's like, "You got, to, you have some a little bit of talent, but uh, the rest of you, oh, your their timing." Um, these lines, this, this dialogue is just is like mashed together and it's just very confused. I was, I was confused by the whole thing, if I'm being honest. Combat right. is confusing. Yeah. It happened a lot yeah. slower. <laughs> In my head. Yeah, well, maybe pay a little bit more attention during your dress rehearsal. Well, there will be some really good stuff when we get to the part about the air balloon monarch brawl. Oh, that was a good part. That's something that is something that you're really gonna want to see. We're working on the dialogue for that one though. It's mostly action. Battle Toad have Royale. To be some fly rails involved and stuff like that. Harnesses, safety harnesses are important when we're doing these kinds of scenes. And bullywugs. Is it tragic? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. A lot of <laughs> tragic, yeah. yeah it's much tragedy. Yeah, it was pretty. The whole well, thing was sad. Maybe when you, maybe you can perform it for Endlin. To you know, the sadder the better. Hmm. That's an idea. Well, I mean, it was definitely you know? sad for Gullop. I don't know if it was all that sad for Burp the Third or whatever. I mean, or were they all Gullops? They made they made the kids look away. So I'd say it's pretty sad. <laughs> Yeah, and remember the heroic fire the fire of the air balloon shop that we heroically or that was heroically put oh there's so much drama there's so that, much that, drama that... All right. we'll have such a great show for you to perform it'll be and then we and then we clean somebody's pipes what do we do <laughs> we clean the pool the, the yeah, pool. we clean the pool <laughs> the that part pool. out that wasn't that wasn't that exciting no, I thought it would do. We're just... focusing on tragedy. The tragic death oh, of that bully oh. king is pretty good. Oh, that could be. That I could like be that the. One. That could be the, the climax of the show because yeah, she's yeah. she's into yeah. the sad stuff. I enjoyed Probably it. leave the emo elf character out of it that we met over there. He was I think a that's a, a tragedy. Alagarthus is like, I'm come on, guys! Like you tragedy. told me to be this way. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> you, you said, I, sorry, I said cut. It was a different emo elf. <laughs> that got fooled almost in a similar way to you, though. Um, he has the heart of a what? A, a, a goat. A mule? A goat. A goat heart. Oh, that does. That doesn't sound great. I guess this no. isn't that bad. At least I'm getting my steps in. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Elevation changes and such too, you know, fresh yeah. air. You're gonna have great legs after after this. Well, all of these uh upshots considered, um were you being serious about going to talking to Endolin? I would have to I would have to con sort with my group here i just sort of threw that out there and i didn't really ask them if they wanted to do that it's kind of a collective here you know sure sure we don't uh you know an acting collective if you will and uh it's very artsy you know sometimes there's pipes uh like uh vish was talking about sewer pipes not mm. uh peace pipes um. <laughs> are they okay what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Just, just my artistic. Uh... Um, okay. Yeah, I think we're going to go talk. Do you want to just. You need you to work on your segues, man. What, what, besides being sad and whatnot, is there any more advice you have before we go talk to this, to them? Yeah, what does she like? What does she like and what does she strongly dislike? Slash she tragedy. Well, she's. I mean, as you know, she's always looking to recruit more actors more shows um 
That is what she lives for. Oh. She has, as of late, become quite bored uh, with many of the um, traveling shows that she has. Uh, from my understanding, there hasn't been really many productions, if any at all, uh, in the recent recent times. Um, How come? Well, like I said, she's tired of them. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, I, I guess just be careful. Um, she like, she she knows more than she lets on. Um, don't think that you're going to be able to pull the wool over her eyes. She has access to an artifact that allows her to see into the future. So they say. We have heard of this artifact. Um, I guess is, hmm, I don't know. I kind of want to see what other information we can get out of this, but I can't think of other questions to ask. I feel like the more we know, the better. Are we in any danger? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, I mean, you you said you have an invitation. Uh, you'll be free to go and talk with her, I'm sure. Um, she's not going to harm you outwardly, but, you know, follow follow the rules of reciprocity and hospitality and, and be careful, I guess. Uh, dealing with hags is... As I've come to, to realize now, a uh, very tricky business. She's very clever. Okie dokie. I guess uh, we're off then. Wish us luck. Right. Kind of want to light the beacons. Oh well. Yeah, why were you stopping me? I wasn't even like. You aren't supposed to make me sad. You're supposed to make the elf sad. Not our elf, that elf. <laughs> that elf. <laughs> the Puritans just say, um, um, sorry, but, um, our image is everything. And they fly away. They're, they're flying up above. They stop talking. Yeah. Squirt says yeah. goodbye to the prince. Hey, you know, these guys are real good. They're gonna get you out of here, uh... Real, real quick. They, they're real good at talking. And getting out of jams. And... Yep. And the princess says, Okay, squirt. <laughs> you get this... You get the sense that it's, like, weird for him that squirt's talking. An, like... Yeah. I don't remember, like, how much you remember from what squirt said. Like, he was an ordinary... Oil can, and then uh -huh. he came to oh. he came to Prismere with them. So, uh, like, this is still probably odd to him that this mundane object that they brought into the Feywild became like that. So he just says goodbye, and you guys all head out. And it sounds like you want to head up to Motherhorn. Yeah, I think so. I mean, she already knows we're here anyway, right? She's been watching, and she's been seeing the future, so she's aware that we're here. I'd be surprised if she wasn't. So, um, you start to walk uh, up the mountainous trail um, past many of the copper lightning rods that occasionally discharge and send what they will up to uh, Motherhorn. Um, while I'm setting this up, um, you're going to, at some point, um, Gleam and uh, Amador will chime in, and Gleam will say um, that there certainly is no uh, no good that can come of her joining you, since it is her sister that is imprisoned there. Um, so her presence would complicate your arrival. Uh, so her and Amador is sworn to protect Gleam, and... Um, 
And so the two of them will kind of wait for you. Um, we'll say that they'll kind of wait by the the Fey Beacons because presumably you'd be coming back at some point, maybe after you've secured a, a resolution for the Peritons to let the prince get back home. Um, other conversation you wish to have before uh, you get up to the gates? Well, I think that it's important that we don't give too much information. We answer questions, but let's not, you know, give everything. Probably would be a good call. Let's play it by ear. I Happy. vote I to not, not speak talk. during this. As <laughs> I know, I get that conversation to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> But definitely, I think it might be better that we do that. I don't know. Try not to get upset. I don't know. What do you think, Maple? Well, our, our, what's our pitch again? We're gonna we we want to put on a show, but we need them transformed first, and we want to talk to her about securing their transformation so they can put on a last act, maybe a tragic last act in which. Tragedy happens. Got to solve the tragedy. Definitely a tragedy of some type of show that we need to co-op, that we need to uh, talk about with them in some way. But definitely, yes. What? I'm, gl yeah. I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> I as suddenly you, feel less clear. <laughs> as you're, I'm a as, as you're talking and getting muddled here, um, you're climbing up. Uh, it's feels like it's almost getting drearier the closer you get to Motherhorn, and there's like a big, strong gust of wind that blows, and it comes in real harsh, and then like stops and gets real calm. And on the wind, like it brings in to view this little like bird, like paper, but made of paper, almost like an origami type of thing that's just fluttering in the wind, and it kind of flutters over near to you, Lim. I'll hold my hand out and be like, oh, that's kind of cute. And just kind of like let it like land in my hand. It like lands in your hand and like mm -hmm. kind of like kind of shakes itself out. It's all damp and like the water's all soaked. And then oh. like it's kind of like walking around in your hand almost like a bird would. And it's mm -hmm. like staring up at you. And then it suddenly like turns into like a mouth. Becomes like one of those things from like Harry Potter, the little uh -huh. messages that scream at you, the howlers or whatever. Uh -huh. uh, and it's but it's, it doesn't scream at you. It just okay. talks. <laughs> but um, it speaks in this kind of voice that feels familiar, but mm -hmm. um, it like it fills you with sadness instantly. Like like there's a quality to it that almost sounds like. Like, it, it hits this, like, itch in the back of your brain of, like, memories of your true mother, your biological mm -hmm. mother. But, like, as if she was, like, really sick. Like, and on her deathbed. Like, it's sad. Like, it just, like, you mm -hmm. feel like crying, kind of, as you're listening to it. And the voice says, My child, Lim, these past eight years, I have waited so long for you to return. But I knew that patience would return you home. We have much lost time to make up for. But I am encouraged by how powerful you've become. Please, child, do not tarry. I've waited long enough to have you with me again. We have so much to discuss. Your dearest mother and Lynn. And then with that, just kind of like kind of like confetti as it blows up in your face. So that's awkward. Uh, well, Lynn? she knows I'm here. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, uh, probably not, but I'm going to say yes. I'm okay. I'm up and give you a sister hug. 
Oh, I'm just gonna hug you back, and it's gonna be like a real tight squeeze. Yep. Um. Oh yeah, she definitely looks nervous. She you got did. this. Uh, I guess this could be one way that we can get in to speak with her. Yeah. Uh, she's like. She doesn't. I don't think she knows what Endelin would want to talk to her about, but she's kind of just keeps redirecting her thoughts to like, okay, we have these other goals. Let's focus on that. Um, but you could tell she's definitely very nervous that she knows she's here because she doesn't. She rem She remembers more than she does of Endelin. So she's definitely kind of mentally freaking out a little bit. I. I think Mabel can tell that you're kind of starting to spaz and just, it's going to be okay if we're all together. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, we'll be okay. Uh. Want me to walk with you? Yeah. I'll walk with you. So, let's just, all right, so the plan. Let me, let's hear the plan again. We're, we're going up there. We're going to talk to her about a tragic play. And she's just gonna kind of be like, just have people like uh, repeat to her like what the plan is, so that way she like does like doesn't forget it as as they, I guess, continue up the path. Sounds good. Um... Sure. I'll walk. It's still with like you. crazy cold. Yes. <laughs> It is. No. At this yes, point, she Maple's turned whatever blanket she had into like little like extra pants or whatever, like <laughs> and try, trying to keep herself warm. I and know. It's like, sticking next to Shion. I know. She's like, Still climbing action figure Maple at your service. <laughs> I know. Now and again, I rub your back as I'm walking with you. I'm, I'll kind of kind of drift call back. You. I'll drift back with you for a second. I'll drift uh, back uh, with this for a moment, too. I, I think, uh, I don't know. It seems like we heard that, right? We we could hear that pretty well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's... All right. All right. I don't seem like I don't even know if we're going to be doing the talking. It seems like they might need some help of some kind. Like, no one might. Like, is this um, private? Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> is it? Am I not supposed to hear this? No, I just I don't want to put too much pressure on them. But it seems like that it's kind of really important that she not that I don't know that. I think Lim's gonna make a great hag someday. She's figured all the puzzles out and stuff. It's gonna be awesome. I think so. Oh, Sion, you're here too. <laughs> Where'd everybody go? <laughs> Honestly, if everyone like did like a little huddle, she probably wouldn't even notice. She'd be so like in zone and just walking, she wouldn't even notice. <laughs> you got sword. Yes, Sion. Well, I think all we can do is support her and try to, uh, you know, try to help with the conversations and make sure we bring them back to what the reason we're here for is, mm -hmm. which is to get some sort of production started that will be grand enough for you know, Endelin to convince yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, the no. others to It's a long walk. Else. <laughs> if I start saying something stupid, just pinch me or punch me. Not hard. I instantly but... pinch you. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, hey. like, boom. No, please. I did this. I, I was just practicing. The... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Is that, is that, uh, I don't know. Huddle no, and scene. And scene. And scene. Uh, <laughs> just, just, uh, oh. <laughs> All right, so looming above you 
is an ominous gray citadel hewn out of the mountaintop itself. The path leading to it is winding and uh, precipitous. It's very slick. You have to kind of watch. I'm not going to make you do any checks or anything. You have to take care. Um, and every time you feel your foot kind of slip a little bit under the uh, very smooth rock underfoot, you just kind of peer downward and you realize you can't see like a floor or a valley or anything like that. It's just cloud cover below you and mist. And uh, you begin uh, to uh, make your way uh, to the top of the mountain path, which uh, leads to a spiral staircase that climbs 60 feet to a balcony made of weathered gray stone. Um, again, the lightning strikes out at one of the metal rods and you get a pretty good view of the silhouette of this castle. You can see um, you can see this big amphitheater that kind of juts out uh, almost like an overlook off the side of the mountain and there seems to be some kind of like big rigging over it um, where there seems to be you can almost pick out like little creatures. You're probably too far away maybe to really get details as you're climbing up but you kind of get the sense that there's like workers or stagehands or whatever kind of boiling around with wires and magical lights and things like that. Um, you also notice there's like kind of like these big like crane arms that jut off of the stage. Um, you take note of that. The castle itself is composed ma mainly of um, kind of these two circular towers that pierce the sky. And attached to one of them, sitting at a dock, you can see the uh, the storm balloon of the shadow merchants. And so, I'm going to put you on a map here as you arrive in Motherhorn. And you climb that spiraling staircase that leads up uh, to the front doors of Motherhorn. Um, kind of right in front of you, there's just like these two large um, doors that, like, as soon as you... approach um there's like a face that kind of apparates in the middle of them and it is sort of this old withered looking face it's kind of hard to tell um distinct features just that it's it's sort of like molded out of the earth or uh, sorry the the wood of the door itself and it speaks welcome home limb the moon twin is not welcome here. All others may step forward and pass through the black curtain at the end of the entrance hall. The visage then like splits. Like it it, it just kind of like lowers itself down like the crevice of the where the two doors meet and it just kind of vanishes from view as the two doors kind of creak open. And on the other side you can see this um um, it's kind of like a, like a sky bridge. I don't know if that's like the right term, but like, it's just like a, an overlook, I guess. It's like, it's not like a hallway. Nope. There aren't walls on either side. You can actually see down to, um, like a staircase that's kind of running up underneath it. Oh, kind of like a catwalk. Catwalk. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> and on the other side here, uh, sorry, doors open. Uh, you can see that there's a black curtain at the end of the hall. Would Moon Twin mean anything to me? Because he said the Moon Twin can't enter. Yeah, she's not the here. elf that was with us with the Dandelion Knight, Gleam. Oh, the she. Moon twin. The other one's the Sun Twin. Gotcha. She left though, right? Like she, she didn't left. come yeah. up with us. Okay. So uh, just to recap, what that's about is Gleam mentioned. So they both wear these masks. One, That's right. One of the moon, one of the sun. And 
Endelin the eclipse has apparently seen a future where she dies and this idea either it's a truly an eclipse or like she's frightened of things that are like eclipse like or maybe not frightened but um <laughs> does not want to be around such imagery okay uh I guess Lim will hesitantly start making her way through the door and heads towards the curtain. Okay. As you uh, walk forward, and um, one second, I'll turn this uh, token stuff off here. Maybe I'll move your, your tokens as you'd like. Uh, you go ahead and move to the end of the hall there. Um, as you're walking, you notice that kind of recessed into the walls are they like these red orbs, like, and they kind of give off that light, like if you were in a movie theater where it's like the 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 type of light to maybe not distract, like it gives you view, but it's like dim enough that it doesn't like someone were to move that curtain and there's a show in progress or something wouldn't be too distracting. Mm. Okay. And I guess while we're passing over, like, through this catwalk, uh, what's kind of, like, what's going down in the hallway to the right? Like, it kind of it kind of goes a little further, and is that, like, another staircase? Or, yeah. So what you see there is it looks like there's, like, a wooden platform in um, the floor. And uh, you probably see there's like an iron lever fixed to the wall nearby. Okay. Uh, there's nobody present. And then you just see like the oh, hall the seems to like kind of keep continuing. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for the cheer. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. I guess uh, she will, after kind of taking a minute to look around at what what's available to see. Uh, she would scoot further and and just kind of peek past the curtain. <laughs> kind of like everything she's doing, <laughs> she's moving cautiously. All squirt. right. Yeah, you uh, you move the the curtain aside, and mm -hmm. uh, you can see now on the other side. Move your token up a, a bit. Um, there's a staircase you're at like kind of the top of a staircase that leads down into this amphitheater it is open air so like once again like kind of the coldness of outside kind of hits you a little bit of that kind of precipitous kind of air um, feel uh, hits your face as you uh, pull the curtain aside and um just got to center my image here. I want the folks to be able to see this huge area. So um, you can see, like, there, there, there's these short cloaked figures that are kind of scuttling about. Um, there's, like, a few that are even, like, kind of sitting on the benches of, or not the benches, but, like, the, the stairs, I guess, of the amphitheater, the seating area. Um, not not a ton, just like a couple of like looky loos that are uh, apparently observing. There looks like there's a trio of actors in the stage area of the amphitheater that are just sort of. Um, you don't get the sense that they're actively performing. They're probably rehearsing, like, and these are kind of like stage hands or whatnot. They're just kind of mulling about. Um, you see that uh, th towards the back here, uh, there's actually a wall. It's like 10 foot wall. So like kind of keeps the wind, maybe protects this area a little bit from the harshness of that cold blast of air. And um, it seems that they put like sort of like paneling and different backdrops to some of the scenes and whatnot uh, up on the wall there. Uh, there again there's uh, here you can see very clearly kind of the rigging of this like kind of big um, 
iron arch that rises up overhead where there's you can see goblins are actually up there uh, kind of scuttling about and pulling up ropes and um, configuring different little magical like lighting kind of situ uh, artifacts uh, to the rigging and um, somewhere up ahead you look up and it's just kind of like Uh, it, you get the sense that there's like uh, a balcony up there. Some, I don't know, t tens of, tens of feet up above, like looking down even higher up than the the rigging. And from up there, you can can kind of hear like the sounds of like chains and machinery or something, kind of this foreign kind of murmuring. Uh, do you remember this place at all, Jim? Um, just sort of like a very vague recollection. Like it feels familiar, but mm -hmm. not like distinct memories. Uh, I want to compare it to Deja Vu, where it's like... yeah. It seems familiar, but also it could not be. But also, in my case, it could be. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. These go up. The stage... The stage is over... Whoops. How does this thing's work? Stage is, like, over here? Or, like... Or like, is this circle like the, the floor, stage? Yeah, the, the circle, like, you know, it's an amphitheater, so it's all raised. Gotcha, so gotcha. It's, it's kind of like Shakespearean feel a bit. Like. Gotcha, okay. I see. And there's machinery up there, I guess. Should we... Should we ask where to find Endolin? Probably if we maybe take that direction. Yeah. Um I guess Lim will go over to one of the to one of the looky loos and okay. ask if they, they know where to find Endolin. Uh so you go and talk to one of these uh figures and so it is um tiny little creature, maybe about three feet tall. Um and it sort of reminds you of the type of creature that uh, ran that little merchant shop. It's just kind of got this kind of bluish hued skin. Oh, the darklings? Yeah, like the the little guy here. Yeah. Um, and so it's just hooded there, kind of huddled with its hood up. And you go and you, you talk to it and it says, Andalyn? Uh, well, I don't know. She might be... Probably just up in her room, in her chambers. I don't know. You maybe you go and ask a uh, last stage fright. She would know. <laughs> he points at this goblin that's got like a clipboard and uh, is just kind of like it seems like kind of talking at the actors that are rehearsing and um, keeps interrupting them. And it seems like maybe giving them notes. Okay. Uh, all right. She'll make her way uh, to where where stage fright is. And same question. Uh, do you know where we can find Endolin? Endolin? Endolin is the least of my worries right now. I hope she's not here seeing this dreadful performance. And uh, you see the three actors just kind of like give a shrug. And there's like... One of them is... Uh... Uh, one of them is a an elf, um, yeah, a female elf, and she just says, "Well, you're giving us this is these this li these lines are trash, strange fright. Like, you got to give us something to work with. Like, th th this isn't a tragic story at all. Like, it's and 
Oh my gosh, the dragon, the costume. Have you seen the costume? And like they're just kind of muttering about whatever is going on with their performance and stage princess. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna be fired. I'm gonna be let go. Uh for sure. Uh what's what's the problem? And she's totally like William totally trying to procrastinate on seeing Endolin. Like she's like, what can we do here? <laughs> I just, I need to get an act in here that Endolin will approve of. I, nothing, nothing seems to please her. Mm, what do you, what have you been trying now? Has she seen this already or no? I hope not. Um, and she, you just, yeah, still you, keep, be good. you keep noticing, like she keeps glancing up, like up at that balcony. That's like way mm -hmm. up. And she says, this one, it's called a village no more. It's. I don't know where I found it. I, I, I've been going through old scripts. It's about... I thought maybe a little dark humor. We haven't really tried the humor angle in a while. So this one is about a, a village idiot. Gets drunk and goes and decides on a dare to go and steal some coin, but a bit of coin from the local dragon. Mm -hmm. Manages to get through it. Returns back to town. Dragon finds out and takes it out on the village. Everybody dies except for the fool. And, you know, we, I've been work, we've been workshopping some lines and stuff, and frankly, they're right. The dragon costume is, is it's just, it's horrendous. It's awful. I, I Just this patchwork of... And as, as, she, as she says that, you see this from, like, um, behind, like, the partition over here. Mm -hmm. You see uh, this really poorly put together cloth. Like, like go back and remember, like, the unicorn costume, the original unicorn costume that you saw before it was, like, all patched up and fixed. Like, it's worse than that in quality. And it's, like, looks sort of like a Barney the Dinosaur <laughs> kind of costume. It's green. And... Uh, it just moves out and like there's only like one person in the costume it's like probably like a three person thing mm -hmm. and it's just like one person in the front part and the rest of it just drags behind and whoever the actor is on the inside gives like the most unenthusiastic like Rawr. I <laughs> am the drag oh. and stage fright just says see see uh, yeah. 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 Can I be the dragon? <laughs> can, I, can I be the dragon? Can I, can I be the dragon? Can Pincushion fix the dragon? Uh, yeah. Pin, Pincushion's pretty, pretty awesome. Pincushion <laughs> could fix the dragon if... But we could also try putting on... Helping produce our show. Oh yeah. We wanted to produce. Does our show yeah. have a dragon? Could add one. Good. Good. No one. one to tell us that we didn't have a dragon in our story. It does now. There's a dragon right there. That's the story. I'm telling you. The thing is, is that things are happening in this spot that becomes part of the story. There's a dragon in our story now. It's right there. It's happening. The yeah. now. Dragon. It's happening now. It's happening. The dragon uh, right takes then. the head off, and you can see it's a bugbear, and it looks over ah. at Arlo, and he says, Ar Hey, Ar Arlo, is that you? <laughs> and you would yes. recognize this as Hurley, who Hurley. is uh, uh, Burley's brother. He was the fucking bugbear, right? He, yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. He was... was detaining the little uh, the troublemaker guy, the pro, you know, whatever. Yeah, the the Kenku. Kenku. K Kettle yeah. Steam, I think his name is. Kettle Steam, I miss Kettle Steam. Really use Kettle Steam. We need a Kettle Steam in our story That's now, true. and that will be the first tragedy, in the the epic tragedy. It's gonna be like longer than the Odyssey, I think. That's how good this play is gonna be. 17 acts. Much more tragic than the previous. 
Oh. With more tears. More tears than the previous. Uh, hi, Hurley. How are you? Uh, gee, oh. Not too good. They got me in this stupid costume. How are you? Friggin' sucks. Hurley in that costume. They, they gotta play the dragon. They always give me the the, the violent types. I get typecast uh, bugbear. That is horrendous believe that? typecasting, yeah. I believe it, you yeah, know. Some the kind of discrimination grow, here. But, yeah. Wait, wait. You need to be the one that evolved the change, him. though, Hurley. We need to help. I, I fly over to him as I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Am I to understand you don't want to be the dragon? I hate it. I friggin' hate it, man. I don't even want to be an actor. I want to be, uh, I like building things. I want to be the stage crew, you know, building the sets and... That. I need a big guy, big guy in the costume, I guess, to go rawr and uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, I mean... Hey, Arlo, how are you doing? Uh, you... How are you? You're, you're here? Or are, you, are you getting into the acting thing? That wasn't really your shtick, as I remember. More of a producer. Uh, oh. Hey, that's where the money's at, like, eh? Yeah. No. Yeah, you know. Um, we have ideas. And, uh, oh, we're, we've come to Endolin to, to talk through some of them. And among other business with Endolin, I guess. Yeah, they're real Any important to come here talking to the Hags. Big business, big producer guy, huh? That's pretty nice. Producer guy. Yeah. yeah. I seems you're doing, you're doing good for yourself. I, one might interpret it that way, I suppose. Hey, you know, uh, I saw a gleam and glister a while back here. Uh, we saw a gleam out on our way here. Talk to her a little bit. You can see, like, Understand. the stage phrase is like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Throw me in the dungeon if you want, and I'm over it. Yeah, That's what so they did I with Glister. And then stage oh, right, stage right's just like, okay, you're done. Why don't you take five? And she's just kind of like ushers him away. He's just like, uh, talk to you later, Arlo. I see you like early. Just, please. <laughs> Good to see you again, big guy. He kind of gives you a little like. Soft little punch on the shoulder as he goes by. Huh. Right, so that dragon costume is horrendous. So I might be able to help with that too. I think, mm. Madam Stage Fright. By all means, and she goes and she like, she kind of like picks it up and it's like comically big in her arms, but then she like puts it into your Everybody. arms. Yeah, do you have a costume shop any more of this material? Um, she says, uh, yes. Um, like a little tap to my backpack. She will point to, um, uh, we'll say she kind of points up at, um, the staircase here. And she says, if you go up those stairs and then to the left, that's where all the, the prop storage and everything is. You should be able to find some, you should be able to find some, some, some tools and some needle and thread and, and such in there. We have Pincushion fix up their dragon costume while we talk to Endolin. Pincushion just picks, peeks out of the bag and says, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> He's been like eyeing this costume the whole time. Like, I wanna, like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. That's so Are bad. You... <laughs> he it. It is really bad. It sucks. You That's sure okay. You I can leave him alone. I think he'll be safe here with you, stage fright, right? Hurley's wow. back there somewhere. Take she, care of you. She says. Yeah, of course. So it's, it's it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Did you say something about you got a performance? Your producer? Producers with a great show concept, but we're trying to gather up enough performers to put it on and convince Endolin that she should let us put it on here. And we need a director. We need you know a, a, we need a we need some time in the space to it. really make it kick. 
We can do this. Can you show? Oh. Can you show me a little bit of it? <laughs> no. Let's have a huddle up. Huddle up. Huddle up. Let's, have to, have to love. <laughs> Let's right. do a, a bit of the last part, but better. Uh, actually, hold on. Is there any? I want to look around. Is there any place here? Where uh, there's like. You could pretend to be in an air balloon, but with a safe falling distance. Um, she, uh, Sage Fright just says you need you need a prop balloon. We could rig something up. I I've, I've got okay. no problem. All right, guys, we're gonna do the monarch brawl scene. Okay. Improv style, but we gotta get a good heart throbbing story leading up to it. It can't be this. Let's be gallop. He didn't really have that great of a personality. Monarch brawl. The monarch brawl. Oh, when they oh. Okay. I, like found, then, I feel and, like we uh, found Arlo's like secret passion. Like he wanted mm -hmm. to be. <laughs> you really, you really talk a lot for some reason now. You're really excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, the stage fright. Stage fright says it sounds like you got a great premise. I'm not questioning that. I want you to perform, but I am going to give you some. Bits of dialogue that you got to work into your your oh. narrative because oh. you got to be quick on your feet. Endelin is a very fickle. You're playing for an audience of one. You understand that, right? She's very fickle. She changes, and you got to be able to adapt on the fly. Mm. You see, so I want to test that before we put you in front of her, right? Like we want to make sure this is solid. Okay. Okay. We can do that, but but we also do have a group that, of actors we might like to do this for us eventually. So yeah, well, right, as right. good as you think it could be, it's it's not. It's just because we aren't the stars. We, we have we're not trained in the acting. We're trained in the helping the actors part. We, the we have a troop. Part. We have a professional troop. I did. Think, I think I was pretty good. A collective, you know. So yeah, we'll do it. Let's go. All right. All right. So uh, you can. Be, feel free to talk about the things um, that you want to use as kind of like the basis of your narrative, but I'm going to privately in Fantasy Grounds give you each a line. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is cool. And you have to like work. So basically, I'm scoring you. There's not necessarily like a skill check at the end of this. I'm scoring you based on things that um, you build into your performance here. So Interesting. You get, you get points for using the line that I give you. If you use the line, um, I'll give you another one so you can continue to point. Oh. You get a point anytime like a uh, dramatically tragic thing happens in your narrative or your your the theater. Um, you also get a point. Um. Well, those are the things you get a point for. If, uh, if someone stays the focus too long, I may deduct a point. Um, and you get points for, like, kind of getting an ensemble. Like, the more of you that participate, the better. I'll I'll time out at times to give to give me enough time to because I don't have handouts so I have to moderate this a little bit more than if we were at a table I'd just be like shooting handouts at you real quick, um, but does that make sense for the most mm -hmm. part? Okay, mm -hmm. so where, where are the lines going to be? I'm going to send them to you privately in Fantasy Ground so you'll you'll see it as a message in the chat uh, where the dice get rolled. Oh okay. So yeah. for example, uh. Now, I did this earlier, so I got I better test it real quick just to make sure it still uh, works okay. Did that work, Gion? Did you get something? Yep, I see it. Okay. So we are. He's we figuring are... this out. Do we want to talk a little bit about the plot we want to do? I was about yes. to say, just got to double check. We're doing the, uh, so the, the Royal Rumble. Yeah. In but the... should we start with the, like, the, oh, no. the day before where 
remember we kind of stopped the assassination and and insert and came up with the idea of the a monarch brawl and then we'll like quick go to the monarch brawl so there can be extra tragedy right mm -hmm. and so quick character picks all right i'll do the i'll do the stupid the stupid frog which one Wait, I'm just like, the first one, one. King Gollop? Yeah. Do we remember the what the... the I'm yes. sure I can find it. You could be the narrator, yes, Yon. That'd be good. You could keep us involved and updated and make sure you interrupt us when we need to move the scene along. Okay. Hmm. Would you I'll be the would-be contestant, or the would-be assassinator, you know? And then maybe Shion, you can be the one that prevents the diplomats, the that first assassination attempt and organizes the brawl. Maybe. Maple, you can do whatever you want. Oh, there rooms. we go. Play so it was, it was Illuin... It was Illowin and King Gullop. And then I was the I was the Gullop defender. Right? Right, you did defend Gullop. Yeah, since I'm narrating you can do that part. Oh, okay. You're narrating. Um I'm narrating. And then, then Lim, you wanna be the like peacemaker? He does so so I try to assassinate the Gullop. Gullop mm -hmm. doesn't get assassinated because Maple is the defender. Whatever. They were gonna make you. They were gonna make someone fight the defender, right? I don't, how did that work? You had to fight their champion. Yep. You have to fight a champion. Well, let me mm -hmm. play the champion. That won't work. I'll attempt to assassinate wait. Gullop, but I'll be foiled by someone. Okay. Wait. So and... who's playing? So wait. Start again. Wait, Who's playing who? This can actually work, and it's tragic. I think... Well, so Maybe you should yeah. play all of us. You could be the adventurer. You could be us. Okay. Lim plays the adventurers. <laughs> I could do disguise self. I could do it. <laughs> for how many spell slots I got. <laughs> I play Maple. that you... person who's trying to assassinate King Gullop. Maple, who do you want to play? Party. Is, uh, Joe is Ill Illwin. What? <laughs> I think I was like the defender of the king. Or am I not doing that now? We're acting here in various different parts, not the parts we played at okay. that time. So, do you want to be like that really cool pet that the king had? No. He don't lines. want to be well. the. You want to be the alligator. <laughs> the alligator. The cushion. <laughs> you could talk, and you'll be tragic. We'll do something like to destroy you. Maybe you can be like that emo elf that was there, and just be like, "This sucks. I'm leaving." Well, hold on. So we're. So are we starting from like? Okay, so we have uh, phase one assassination attempt. Mm. Uh, Peacekeeper tries to suggest uh, how who who takes the throne, which then leads into finale of balloon, balloon fight. The, the one that, thing even about... after the monarch balloon fight, didn't that one lady have to like fight a champion as well? That captive. I think that was before, freedom. right? Uh, yeah, we switch skip that part up. then. Yeah. yeah, we'll skip but, that. But yeah, the those big, two the... phases should be enough, right? The best yeah. thing about a tragedy is that you have to get them to care about the character. So we have so to give a little bit of a... Shion, that's going to be... You're going to be the narrator to start with. You're going to have to really make them care about somebody. <laughs> Got it. <Come> on it. <laughs> Maple, did we decide who you're going to be yet? Nope. Am I this? I can be the assassin person. That'd be fun. I was the, I think, oh, you're, you? I was going to be the person that was leading the coup, right? The other person that then had to be in the monarch brawl with King Gullop, then defeats King Gullop. Illwyn. Okay. 
Still in. So I'm representing the party, us. Yep. Arlo is representing... Bad guy Illowin. one. Bad guy one. She owns narrator. Narrator. Maple. <laughs> Maple's the rebellious one that wants to be king? I thought that was Arlo. <laughs> and that's the same thing. <laughs> I think that maybe you, we, whatever other parts we need, Maple could fly around and he, Maple could take over like maybe like 12 yeah. other parts that we Just need. Just remember there was a pet, there was an assistant. <laughs> you could be and in so, everything. So you could Vish, be in everything, Maple. <laughs> would Vish be Gullip okay. then? Yes. Okay. Vish was gonna be Gullip. Right? Okay. So well, ultimately, it's gonna be Vish and Arlo duking it out as one is Gullip and one is Illwyn. Okay. You can make it sadder than normal, though, if you want to really make it sad. Yeah, it's gotta I be mean, sadder than what it actually happened, right? Because see, I mean... seeing that crocodile cry was pretty sad. <laughs> the cro <laughs> why would? Why don't you want to be the crocodile pet? That's the best part. Okay. You, do you, do you, want <laughs> you can see at this point that uh, Stage Fright has kind of left you to your own devices. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems has went around and kind of very informally kind of hyped up that you guys were going to try something new. And so there there are some like other like like other actors and whatever have like gathered on the steps of the amphitheater to kind of watch. And uh, she just comes over and she's like, okay, you guys, you got 10 minutes. If you, <laughs> if you like, the whole crowd here is, is, is watching, and they'll be able to give you kind of a good sense of whether this is going to work for Andalyn or not. Okay. So, break a leg. Can we have access to the costumes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want costumes? And she kind of points you to... Um, Kind of again, like the the prop stage, uh, prop storage where uh, presumably pin cushion is working right now. That's cool. all wigs and yeah, cool. Let's win some crowns and what? Yeah, yeah, whatever you're looking for. Is gonna be nice. And whatever we can to show the royalty part. Maybe some gonna... swords too. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna grab a different colored wig for each person except for Arlo. I'm going to try to find some bunny ears. And that's <laughs> that way I can put sure. it. Yep. And just awesome. swap them out. So then um, as you do that, you see like the lights get real dim up above from where the goblins are working. And uh, uh, stage fright uh, just um she goes out and like kind of addresses the crowd like, okay, everybody, uh, this is very exciting. We've got some, some new talent that just wandered in here, and apparently they've got some tragic tales for us. And so I'm going to, without further ado, allow them to introduce themselves and, hey, what's the name of your play? What's the name of it? Great Brawl. They're going to be performing <laughs> The Great Brawl. <laughs> And then she just kind of exits stage left and, like, kind of gives the attention over to Shion. Okay, I come out into the spotlight with my foot all the way up and kind of looking down the floor. And once I actually hit the light, I'll throw back my um, my hood and expose my ears. Which, what? I don't know what people think about that, but anyway. Okay, picture if you will. It's a beautiful night. There's a lot of villagers in the Bullywood town. We're getting ready to have a great brawl. King Gullop, the great and powerful one, he is trying to retain his throne while this new Ilwyn is challenging him to a duel. Only they're making it very interesting and having it in a balloon above the village. Everybody is gathered. There's delights and screams, yells. People are, are watching you with anticipation trying to choose their champion. Both of them enter the balloon. Look what happens next. And I put my hood up and back off. And there's like a there's like a kind of basket like thing that's attached to some rope and rigging to up above and there's some goblins that are ready to like 
raise and lower it as you guys need. Mm -hmm. You, King Gullop, are nothing but an oppressive rapscallion and a rake. You would make a mistress of the moon if it shone on you, and I am here to end your reign of terror. Gulp, you're talking to me? I'm the king around here, partner. And there's something else that in store for you, the monarch style. But first, let me kiss my many kids that I love and brought to see this fight. Come here. Maple. <laughs> you. Oh, love. <laughs> The mm. humor, I can barely hold my sides. <laughs> Don't you know nothing of love? You're too selfish. Papa, I'm gonna, uh, oh. I'm gonna slide on in, holding the various wigs to represent the party. <laughs> Just like one on my staff, one on my hand, bunny ears on my head, and like just holding everything. Uh, shoot. I think Lim just got stage fright. <laughs> <laughs> and what can I go? Ah! Lim's gonna, Lim's gonna uh, uh, slide in be, and kind of hold up uh, our like Arlo's bunny ears. Be like, stop! Don't be a fool. Uh, are you truly going to throw away one's life for another? And like, just kind of like try to like hi like hype up the fight. Can't you hear what they said about me in front of all my 12 children? Yeah, they didn't hear what you said. <laughs> and, my pup, and my puppy dog, Gator, Gator Gollop. Am I the Gator again? Okay. <laughs> look at the Gator, and then I look back at King Gollop. Silence, Piglet, you have squealed enough. Let's fight. Oh. oh. And with that, they both grabbed their mightiest weapons and they met the balloon and the balloon rose. Lim is going to move to be the audience, to help with being the audience. You're like, oh. they're flying higher and higher. <laughs> well, at this point, the balloon is like moving up. I'm going to go ahead and step in and kind of trip over. And go, this portends an unpleasant day. You I look to my master as he holds his throne. <laughs> <laughs> He's had little bubbles. <laughs> He's it. We're going to get up. Do some really good fight scenes. Eyes wide open, hoping for a bone. <laughs> and what call up? I, I try to push Bish out of the air balloon. <laughs> What are you doing? The tragic, you? Song, the tragic I've, tone. I've I've had this. I've I, I've had this. This for over five hours. This this ring. This it. This, this, how dare you? Don't you know? No. He reaches on and they continue to fight. It's to the death. What? <laughs> no. I see don't, my Why master are you pushing me? Turn to stone. <laughs> <laughs> I start stabbing motions, <laughs> killing him, and then no, I toss him over. No, no, my children are down there. I'm gonna fall on them. No. <laughs> after all the, after oh, all the good that Gulp has done. Onto the road of all of the people, he's been defeated. Project Tone. Oh, I'm just going to like lower the balloon down. <laughs> Press the digitation I, little like like a pool of blood. <laughs> I look over at the alligator and I give it like a here boy. When my final prayer <clears throat> as I land on all of my children is that all I I would tear the world in two for a quaff. <laughs> Maple cast fairy fire with a dark green and his dead body. As the party, I'm gonna hold up each one like someone else. I'm gonna hold up the Shion wig. Like, oh no! 
what have we done? We've helped with this tragedy. And then as Maple be like, I think this is too sad. I think I'll hide in the chimney. And then I'm going <laughs> to wig and like throw it. <laughs> As uh, so as Ilva and I get off of the, off of the balloon, and I see King Gollop sprawled across his children, and they're all dead too. And I say, what "Fresh horror is this? Such tragedy! Only one was supposed to die, but now thirteen have." If that, <laughs> I jump to my feet. If that was a question, then I'll answer this one. And I go and I go to run forward with like flat of children behind me. And I go and thrust my little staff at, back at you as well. And begin to bolt to die again in your arms. I always truly loved you. Why did you I did not see that coming? <laughs> Why did you do this? <laughs> Didn't know. No, about the love. <laughs> we killed each other. Why? If only I had more time than a few hours. I was busy. <laughs> Such tragic story. And again, I'm with drums. <laughs> <laughs> I, I <was> <laughs> Sad percussion. The crowd like doesn't know exactly what to do. They start clapping. <laughs> That's the right response. That one's got it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, pretty soon, um, there's just like all of the lights go out and the crowd gets real quiet. And you hear a voice from up above just say, That was acceptable. <laughs> Send them up. <laughs> and stage fright, like her eyes are just like real big, and she's like, Well, that's certainly a sign. It's acceptable, like. On the upper end of the scale, like, is that she just, like, really, really chintzy with compliments? Or does it really mean acceptable? Let's go find out. Like kinda... Lim is, like, hiding more in her hair. <laughs> well. Work. Let's go. I think she said exceptional. I'm sure she said exceptional. I heard exceptional. Exceptional. I, that's what I heard. <laughs> I don't think that's what she said. <laughs> And what is what is more tragic than false confidence? Totally. <laughs> and I, death, um, a lack of cookies. Um, Ooh, the lack of cookies. That's true. Yes, yeah, starts to list it. So people Linus. start to kind of exit out from the amphitheater. Stage Fright points you to these stairs and she just says go through the library there and then head up uh, to the northwest. There's a small hallway there. You'll find us good, guys. staircase that leads you up to the towers. Then Cushion, why don't, you come, why don't you take a break and come sit in the backpack for while we have this meeting. I don't want to just in case we get, you know, yeah, you go gather up. Pincushion goes and says, "Oh, I didn't get I didn't get much done there, Arlo. That's that's good. That's a big job." Well, we'll have Hopefully time, we'll I back. think, after this. But you know what? I don't want them to benefit from the fruits of your labor unless they're going to accept us and let us put on the production. That's what really I'm thinking. So yeah. Otherwise, we'll have other stuff you can... We'll, we'll find plenty of other places for you to fix stuff. If you want. I know you enjoy that. My favorite. So you can, uh, if you wish, to go forward. Um, you can send your tokens up the staircase.
And as you move Roof. into this chamber, um, what you'll see is that this is a magnificent hall. It, it is a library. Uh, the walls from floor to ceiling are stacked with uh, bookshelves that just house li uh, book after book of leather bound tomes. And um, so, you know, occasional just big bundle of parchment that's just sort of crammed into crevices between. Uh, and you see that there are three elderly bespectacled goblins that are climbing ladders to fetch books, um, seemingly for three slender cloaked figures that are reading while seated in overstuffed armchairs. Um, I don't know if you got vision, but basically the hall that you're looking for is up in the upper left corner of this hall. Oh, okay. Oh, I can't see that yet. Okay. Standing too far back. Is there anything that your characters would like to do as they pass through this room? Um, I guess maybe do just kind of general glance around at like the various books, see if maybe there's any title that stands out more than others. Yeah, or is there anything open like on a main pedestal? Um, you can both make investigation checks. Sure. Let's see. Investigation. <laughs> okay. Uh, brand. <laughs> there's nothing that specifically sticks out to you. It's just a quick glance. Like I'm taking this to mean like you're not spending like nah a lot of time. So passing through basically. Mm -hmm. No, nothing that is obvious. Nothing to see here. Well, um, I'll just. You'll see that there is a small hallway there with a door at the end, and then the staircase is right here. So heading up to the second floor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, give me one second. I will move your tokens up. All right. Uh, hopefully you can all kind of see. You just uh, are in a different part of the map, so just scroll kind of up and to the left a little bit on that map. Got it. And you'll come out into a hallway, and immediately... I'm just going to describe what you see to your left immediately as you come out of that stairwell. You can feel free to move your kind of tokens out so you can see a little bit. But as you're coming out of the stairwell and to your left, you see a cylindrical chamber that houses a contraption that whirls and revolves, composed of kind of many um, kind of revolving metal discs and uh, arms that sweep back and forth. And this is very clearly that thing that was making all of that racket, uh, the noise that you heard from down below. Um, and you're probably putting two to two together as you're seeing kind of electrical discharge jump from each of the po the rods that cir circle around here. This is probably the orrery of tragedies that has uh, been spoken about to you before. The apparatus is inlaid with characters from strange alphabets, and there are smoky wisps in the shapes of letters that rise from the contraption as it revolves. Rising from the middle of the mechanism is an 80-foot-tall copper pole made of eight 10-foot-long uh, lightning rods. Each one has a shape that mirrors uh, those that you saw out in the mountaintops, like crescent moon or star or these types of things. Um, there are three goblins that are wearing overalls and goggles that are using brooms to sweep the floor. Um... 
seemingly untroubled by this big, chaotic-looking contraption. Huh. Come on. Um, at the end of the hall here, what you see is um, there are two rusty suits of armor sized for goblins that are equipped with halberds that seem to be flanking these uh, stone doors. Uh, the doors are bereft of handles, hinges, or decoration. Hmm. Something about a moon or something about eclipse. It's just hmm. not big how you can Lim, shouldn't you, you know, go ahead. Oh, should I? This door? <laughs> it's just gonna go over. go over to the door. It would be this one, right? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, to find, uh, Endolin. Find Endolin? Uh, you're not sure. Uh, you just okay. got... I'm gonna say, I don't know. Like she could probably just stage fright. Probably just told you to keep going up. Mm. So probably not. Uh, you're probably thinking you probably oh, okay. have to go to the top, which would be one more floor up. Oh, okay, gotcha. But whatever um, this is, does look fortified. Interesting. Okay. Is there anything to suggest what that door is for? Or not really. Um, outwardly, I would say no. Okay. But, um, like, it's only, it only looks like a door in the general sense that there's like a line down the middle. Like, mm. like there is no window in, there is nothing. It's just like kind of mm -hmm. two slabs of stone. And then... Like, how, how you would open that, it must be a mechanism, or you don't really know on mm -hmm. first glance. Okay. Uh, Are I think... there any... Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Are there any markings on either the floor or the door? Um... Not that you see from where you were at, no. Okay. If I get closer oh. to this general vicinity in front of the door, is there anything on the door or the floor? As you get closer to the door, um, you see a mouth and a face kind of emerge in the stonework. doesn't really have like well-shaped eyes or anything like that but just sort of like you know stone orbs there in its kind of hollowed out eye sockets yep. cool. and it says it speaks as you get closer it says you shall not pass back I command you I get thrown uh, it doesn't Nothing outwardly happens to you just yet. Just okay. yet. <laughs> I think but he just keep, continues to say, Back away. Lim, do you maybe want to come up here with me? Okay. What, why? There's a face in the door and it's speaking. What Shall do you not pass? What do you Over protect? The corner. Okay, I will take a step back behind Blim and let Blim. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to occupy your spaces. And let Blim walk all the way up to it. And Lim is very clearly like Endolin's voice. Whether it's yeah. her presence or not, it is her voice. And I think that is absolutely terrifying, Lim. Just like, <gasps> yeah, well, you want to go upstairs? So maybe just leave this door I alone. Think, I think uh, they don't want us to pass, Lim. I th that's right, right? You don't want us to pass, right? Actually, yeah. We don't want to pass. 
we're not gonna pass. Is that yeah, okay? Just... We're going to go. Okay. What? Right now? Uh, yeah. Just head upstairs. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that. Like Lim's totally chicken chickening out. She's like, she's going to the she's going to the stairs. I just respect the door. No means no. Let's go upstairs. <laughs> I I respect that door's choices. <laughs> choices in life. All right. I want to knock on the door. You knock on the door. <laughs> like um, with knock. With the spell no, knock. We won't do that yet. Yeah, we won't do that yet. I'll just stay up here. Okay. <laughs> you put a pin in that for now. Um, yep. And you move up uh, to perhaps keep your appointment with Endolin. Yep. Okay. So go ahead and like you can move out into like the orrery of tragedies. Uh, the goblins. They're kind of sweeping the floor, keeping the place clean, like probably look up for, for a second and then just go about their business. I do want to take a quick peek at the orrery uh, before continuing up. Sure. So it's just like, it's working. It's just like, like moving, you don't, you know, it seems to be powered and it seems to be doing its thing. Is I, I I was actually gonna ask: Is there a way, a way to determine how it does its thing? Like, clearly the electricity and the poles have something to do with it, but how how this gives a view of the future? Um, you can make an Arcana check. Okay. Oh. So, 21. Uh, you're probably imagining that um, the symbols and the uh, the iconography of the uh, the letters and everything like that is all that it's probably that somehow you would channel a question to mm. the orrery which is probably attuned to by Endolin. And then she okay. interprets it almost like a tarot card deck. Where oh, okay. She's probably not getting like explicitly what the future is, but is maybe maybe keenly in tune with this thing enough that she gets pretty good readings from it. Um, gotcha. There's okay. I'm, also I'm like mathematical like, uh... things that you see on one of the arms. So oh. like a way to like make calculations or measurements of some sort. Oh, um, cool. So there might even be your best with a 21 you're guessing that there's probably like a book or something a manual or like an interpretation guide that maybe would go along with this okay yeah it's making me think like uh uh like the golden compass like that old yeah like that's, what old I, book. yeah. that's what i was thinking there's a cipher for it yeah 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 yeah, where it's not like there's just symbols that represent ideas or things like that. Okay. And Endolin maybe is like Lyra and is like the one person that like <laughs> can nail, the, nail these <laughs> predictions. Exactly. Like everyone, right. everyone else would just be like, eh, roughly good. Yeah. You know. <laughs> That's a baby. And like, nope, that baby means something else. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Um. So this guy that's sweeping in front of me with arrows, is this a staircase or is this just a flooring? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? Directly in front of me, where this guy is sweeping, is this a staircase or is this just flooring where the arrows are? Where the arrows are. Yeah, I see arrows there. Like where's where's the oil can? Oh, that that's the spiral staircase that you went up. That's the case you went up. It would, Got it. it. It could continue up though. Okay. Um, sorry, I misspoke uh, about where you were going to meet um, Andolin. It would be up here. Okay. So, we're gonna end the session right here, and I'm gonna say two things as we end. If you go over here. This is where the audience chamber is. We'll say, we'll just say that Stage Fright like told you all this, kind of gave you directions as you head up. Head up. Um, that's where you could meet Endolin. 
to the south over here. Based on, like, when you came up to the castle, your guess is that that hallway will lead to the dock where the uh, balloon is. And it... So we'll end the session there because there's, there's a lot that can, can, can come of that. Um, I guess let's have a little conversation real quick just to help me with the next session. Where do you think you would go first? Not everybody at once. Should we try to <laughs> no, go what? talk to the uh, merchants out on the dock? Wait, were the merchants on the docks? Were they up off, uh, off the tower further? The, air, the storm balloon folks? I believe mm. they were on the docks. Oh, and they're the ones that... Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, my Actually, they, in yep. theory, ported that woman here mm -hmm. that stole your stuff from the Nightshade in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Or wait, Nightshade is the second one or the first one? Bevlorna is the, the first, first one. one. Bevlorna. Bevlorna, the first. So, so they're the ones that stole your stuff from Bevlorna. The woman that stole your stuff from Bevlorna, at least they moved her here. Um, Let so me we ask could go there we're... first. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say we could go there first just to see if there's a lead on your stuff, and then talk to Endelin after that. My concern is, and I don't know how long she'll be willing to wait. I, don't, I agree with that. I think we should talk to her while the door's open. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I think yeah. it might be best to do that, talk with Endelin first, and then. Yeah. Like, I do, like, do want to see where the other stuff is, like, with the, the thing there. Like, it's right there. Like, I don't want it to fly away. But at Maple's the same gonna time. Trouble if we go south. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, but yeah, like I'm worrying that if like if we do go south and we ignore Endelin's command, like she's already been described as being kind of volatile, um, and I don't think Lim would want to uh, risk that. Maybe we go north. Yeah, I agree. We currently have an open invitation. So I think we should take up that invitation before we go ask about our stuff. By the way, when we're in this general vicinity, do we feel a strong pull to our items here? Uh, yeah. I would say you feel it like like Maple and, and Shion, you feel it to the south. Um, them... I don't know. Let's just say you feel it to the north. Okay. So, like, yeah, our items that, are, are definitely here. Yeah. Yeah, I think at this moment, at Lim is actually not too, not too focused on the item. She's actually more focused on worried about like what might happen to the group if they, if they piss off Endel. <laughs> Agreed. I would say we'll probably take up her invitation first and then see about our item if we get a chance. Sounds good. Well, uh, great. See, I like I never know where you guys are going. <laughs> <laughs> We're going north. It's been here. recorded. You can't back out. <laughs> no, I just I didn't think, I didn't predict we would be at uh, Motherhood tonight. So <laughs> here we are. Um, so we're moments away from meeting the third hag uh, as we close out the session here. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Um, if uh, you haven't done so already, please uh, give us a follow here on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, give us a subscription if you can. Um, yeah, let's uh, close things out. We'll give a little raid over to uh, one of our friends who is running a game here. So, so we can see the bad boy. Thanks, everyone, tonight uh, for hanging out, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll take it back here. All right. <laughs>